Jacob's head was severed from his body. His vertebrae, his spinal cord, was in another spot they discovered away from his severed head. Now, I'm no detective. But that sounds like foul play. What do you think? Do you think that it's just happenstance? When I talked about the lynching of J.B. McGee on Sunday, he was found hanging from a tree. There's a lot of racial implications to something like that. The fact that Javion McGee was found hanging from a tree, and now you have Rasheen Carter that is found, his remains are found spread across two acres. I say foul play in all three of these cases is actually a legitimate claim. I talked about this on Sunday on RBN um, about J.B. McGee. Um, the reports essentially point to him being lynched. This is happening in 2024. This is happening within the last couple of years that we're still seeing black men, particularly black people being lynched. And a lot of times people will go, well, if they're, you know, they, uh, you know, it's not the traditional term of lynching. You know, if you want to argue the semantics, if they're, if the knot is tied, what they're hanging from the tree, are they hanging from the tree? No, no, no. See, here's the thing. When a black person is murdered and that person is no threat to anyone, that's a lynching. It's just murder of anybody. You can, George Floyd was lynched. Lando Castile was lynched. Stanja Bland was lynched. They, they, were all, they all were. All right? And this keeps happening. Whether it's by the cops, whether it's by some racist white people, it continues to happen. Because ultimately, if it's done by cops, they work for, they are essentially part of a white supremacist institution that is original purpose was slave catching. So therefore, anytime a police officer kills somebody who's black, that's not a threat to the safety of anyone, that is a lynching. Also, you know, a lot of times white people will also have racially motivated attacks against black people. And then that's also a lynching. There have been some mysteries that have happened to some black men as uh, within the last couple of years. And I just wanna share a couple of them. I'm gonna share this first story and then we'll talk about it. Make sure this is, there we go. So this came out uh, back in July, says family of missing Little Rock man out of Little Rock, Arkansas, hopes for his answers after his truck was found in Newton County. No, thank you. And let me get that down. Okay. So it says the family of a Little Rock man is speaking out after he was reported missing more than a week ago. Authorities said 41-year-old Clyde Holmes was last seen in Little Rock on July 10th. His truck was found in Newton County on July 11th and later searched by police on July 19th, but no new information was found. According to Holmes' uh, aunt, Deborah Green, it is not in Holmes' nature to respond, to not respond to his family, which is why they're so worried and trying to find answers. By the way, I just want to thank Roger Meadows for these this story. 
It continues. Then uh, when point two is that his cell phone was found in his apartment. So there's no way of contacting him. It was left on his charger. Authorities have been conducting a, search, a ground search with canine teams, but Holmes remains missing. When you don't know a situation, what has happened to your loved one, it is a whole other set of trauma. That's just absolutely true. Green uh, said she still misses uh, him dearly and worried for his safety, urging anyone with information to call the police. She says, Holmes, if you're watching, just give us a call. Just give us a call, one of us a call. Let us know you're okay. It doesn't matter the situation. We will come get you. According to Green, police have been getting tips and following every lead, but they have not found anything that sticks or helps them get closer to finding homes. I just know that Sheriff Wheeler and Detective Boyd are doing what they can, and we certainly appreciate it. That's from what Green said. He describes a 5 foot 10 with black dreadlocks. It is unknown what he is wearing. The Newton County Sheriff, Glenn Wheeler, asked Newton County residents to contact his office. They, if they have seen homes anywhere in Newton County area since July 10th, anyone with possible information about the investigation can contact Newton County Sheriff's Office or the Little Rock Police Department detectives. So right now, as far as we know, uh, this gentleman who essentially is you know, my age has went missing. Uh, and so that's why I have his photo here uh, to the right of me. Uh, so that is him. Uh, so un unfortunately, uh, a lot of people, um, you know, these stories go unheard. What ends up happening is, and I'm going to be very blunt here. An attractive 20 something year old white woman goes missing. Everybody knows about it. Everybody knows. Right? But let a black man or a black woman go missing. Nobody talks about it. Well, not nobody. People in my community will talk about it. But it doesn't make huge national news. Or even if it does, it's here today and then gone like the wind. I have seen national news stories about young white women going missing and then they're still talking about it a year later. So this is why I think it's important that we bring stories like this up. Because Black Lives Matter, too. Let's continue. Uh, I had another. There was another uh, young man. Uh, Let me see, make sure I get this right. Okay, yeah, I think, okay. Uh, so I'm going to go into the story about Rasheen Carter. All right, so let's go into this word. Okay. Just want to make sure I have the correct one that I want to go with first. All right, so let's go to this article first about Rasheem Carter, who is another black man. So this actually made national news which I'm glad it made national news, but it should have been, uh, I don't hear many people talk about it still, but this came out last year. So this is Rasheen Carter's mother, 
with attorney Benjamin Crump. You know, something ha bad happens to somebody black, Benjamin Crump is there because that's the one person that they all call. So it says the family of a black man found dead in Mississippi last year is calling for a more thorough investigation into his disappearance and death, alleging he was murdered after he was told his mother that he was being followed by white men in trucks. What we have is a Mississippi lynching. Benjamin Crump, a high profile civil rights attorney and lawyer for Rasheen Carter's family, said in news conference Monday. Crump told reporters in an autopsy by the state medical examiner's office found Carter's body had been dismembered. The autopsy did not specify dismemberment, but noted that the remains contained about two dozen bones as well as smaller bone fragments that were found across two acres. The autopsy also noted that evidence that Carter's remains had been scavenged by animals, according to a copy obtained by CNN. The condition of Carter's remains meant that state medical examiner cannot reasonably determine the cause of death. The Mississippi, the Mississippi Bureau of Investigation said in a statement, Crump on Monday called the U.S. Department of Justice to open a federal investigation into Carter's death, something Smith County Sheriff uh, Joel Houston, whose office is the lead investigative agency, told CNN he would welcome. Sorry about this. Okay. The investigation said he remained, he said remains ongoing, but authorities have so far not found evidence to corroborate the allegation that he was being followed quote to this date we do not have evidence of foul play but everything is on the table until we turn over every stone it is still an open investigation in quote here's what we know about carter his death and an investigation so far so this is rasheem carter okay so it says his body was found a month after he went missing Carter is the father of a seven-year-old girl and known around his community in Jefferson County for being an excellent cook, or was reported missing in early October, according to a news release at the time from the city of Laurel, Mississippi. He was last seen October 2nd at a Super 8 motel, and his remains were found a month later per the Smith County Sheriff's Office in a wooded area just south, south of Taylorsville, a town around 20 miles west of Laurel in the state's southeastern quadrant at this time we have no reason to believe foul play was involved but it's still a case under investigation uh it says the state's medical examiner's office could determine neither a cause nor a manner of death according to the report detailing the findings those rec records describe carter's remains which is said it was found over approximately two acres as partial and incomplete and said that they were characterized by advanced decomposition there was no readily available evidence of traumatic injury occurring at or around the time of death, but noted several fractures and also evidence of animal activity. It says Carter's family remains suspicious. Carter's family is skeptical and believes that he may have been targeted before his death. At the Monday news conference, his mother read a text message that she received from her son on October 1st, indicating that he believed that there were people who wanted to kill him. At some point, Tiffany Carter said, my son told me there were three truckloads of white guys trying to kill him. She told him to go to the police, she said, but alleged that authorities did not help him when he asked for their help. I want to make something abundantly clear. Unless... You're talking about actual protection of property, especially for the affluent. Police are not going to help you. If it's just your life, especially if you look like me, you're not going to be helped. This is how the system works. Police have an obligation to protect property, capital, but they do not have an obligation to protect you. And this is the problem with the system. Is that a black man can go to the police, express fear for their life, 
and then the police will still not help that person. But let him be a young white girl, and everybody and their mama will be out there to help. I'm sorry. People are getting mad for me for saying this, but that's the way the system works. And some people will say, well, it's a class issue too. Well, yeah, duh, it's also a class issue too, because guess what? If a poor if a poor white dude from Appalachia also needs help, the police aren't really going to help him either. But the thing is, is like they're going to be quicker to help that poor white dude in Appalachia than there will be to help a black person in this country. Why? Because hierarchy. That's how they make it. Trump also told reporters that sometime after Carter went missing before his remains were found, someone used or attempted to use his credit card. Uh, he says, Crump says, it shouldn't have to be this difficult for a broken hearted mother to get answers. So uh, Benjamin Crump has represented the families of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Aubrey. Investigators are saying, he says, in an interview, the sheriff of Houston, Sheriff Houston, uh, told CNN that claims that Carter was being followed have not been borne out by evidence. There have been some allegations that were made indicating that he was being chased by some other people, but there's no evidence indicating that he was being pursued by anyone. It says, of course, we got to determine what took place, what you know caused the death. The autopsy was inconclusive when it comes to no when it comes to the cause of death, so that wasn't necessarily helpful with anything. Houston countered other claims made Monday, said police couldn't help Carter or rumors, he said, didn't care to address. Houston uh, claimed, though, Carter was told that he could stay at the police department's office until someone came to pick him up. Regarding reports of the use of Carter's credit card after his disappearance, Houston said that appeared to be an error. So this basically talks about how there was an error and said that the uh, credit card was used and they basically said that the credit card, uh, it was an error in reporting uh, or due to a lag in paperwork. So they said that it actually wasn't used. So ultimately the family wants is seeking answers about the circumstances that led to his death. Right. And so, of course, his mother, uh, you know, essentially what it sounds like his, you know, his mother was his best friend. And for those of you that have really good relationships with your parents, you know, um, to lose a child. Is immensely difficult. There's actually really no name for a person that loses a child. You know, if you lose a parent, then you're an orphan. If you lose a partner, you're a widow or widower. But what is the name of a person that you give when they lose their child? And so it's one, it's it's that heavy of a weight. But then when you have a really close relationship with that child, so I want to share this as well because this is actually uh, some of what was uh, talked about. This was a uh, shout out to African Diaspora Net News Network. Uh, they actually talked about this story a year ago. So I just want to react to this as well and uh, we'll talk about it. So by now, you all have heard some about what happened to Rasheem Carter in uh, Mississippi, where his body parts were found uh, dismembered, if you will, about a month after he was reported missing by his mother. 
Watch this report. Justice for Rasheem Carter. From the chanting. Justice for Rasheem Carter. To these signs. Justice for Rasheem Carter. It's clear that family members and friends want someone to be held accountable for the death of 25-year-old Rasheem Carter. This was not a natural death. This represents a young man who was killed. Well-known civil rights attorney Ben Crump gives the gruesome details on how the Jefferson County man was found. His head was severed from his body. His vertebrae, his spinal cord, was in another spot they discovered away from his severed head. Now... I'm no detective, but that sounds like foul play. What do you think? Do you think that it's just happenstance? When I talked about the lynching of J.B. McGee on Sunday, he was found hanging from a tree. There's a lot of racial implications to something like that. The fact that Javion McGee was found hanging from a tree, and now you have Rasheem Carter that is found, his remains are found spread across two acres. I say foul play in all three of these cases is actually a legitimate claim. You see why we t I talk about uh, black men being endangered in this country? It's because we are. And it's kind of funny how some people would pass this off when in reality, if you're not black, did you actually have to have a talk with your kids, especially your sons? And what I mean to talk is I mean to talk of how you interact with police when you encounter them. I've had to have this talk. My brothers have had to have this talk. I've had to have this talk with my nephew of how to interact with police when you encounter them because we want you to come home alive. On top of encountering other racist people. They have recently found remains that they believe are also Racine Carter. Carter was last seen outside a Super 8 hotel at the beginning of October in Laurel, which is half an hour from where he had been contracted to work in Taylorsville at Georgia Pacific. Remains believed to be his were found on November 2nd. Those close to Carter say he was being threatened by people he knew. He was dutifully and gainfully employed, just trying to make a living for his young, young child, and ends up dead, chased by what we believe to be a white supremacists, a lynch mob. In fact, Carter's mother, Tiffany Carter, says he even let her know about it during one of his last text messages to her right before he went missing. He said, me and the owner of this company not saying eye to eye, mama. His name, I, which I can't say at this time, but if anything happened to me, he's responsible for it. I'm too smart, mama. He got these guys wanting to kill me. But they say what's even more alarming is the fact that someone attempted to use Carter's credit card even after it was determined that he was dead. And we believe that is a big clue. Think about it. The person who had his credit card is likely to have encountered him while he was alive. Let me ask you something. If you feel like somebody is trying to murder you, is that hyperbole? 
Like, if you know somebody's trying to get you, you know somebody's trying to get at you. And nobody ever said in this report that he had a history of mental illness. There's no paranoid schizophrenia or anything like that. And he's also dead. And it shouldn't have to be this difficult for this broken-hearted mother to get answered. So again, you heard uh, attorney Benjamin Crump and Rasheem's mother detail what happened to him and the events leading up to that. Of course, he told his mother something happened to me. Here's who did it and the people uh, who are responsible for it. And so as of now, some more footage has come out showing him running through what looks like a wooded area. And as his mother said, looks like he was running for his life. So I guess those cameras were on a trail. And so, yes, we see what happened to him. Now, remember, uh, his mother said that he went into the police station. She said, she said because she told him to once he sent her that text thinking, OK, if he goes to the police station, surely they will protect him. But of course, they did not. They sent him on his way, not taking what he was saying seriously. And of course, now we know what happened to him. But I'm with Benjamin Crump on this. Nah. That's not natural causes because the authorities there said, well, it doesn't seem like any foul play is involved, you know? So it's like, if there's no foul play, are you saying it's natural? I mean, he was only 25. Sound like he was very healthy because he was working construction. So what are you saying happened to him? We ain't stupid. We're not. Also, they were able to capture him on film going running in the trail. By the way, he's complete he's shirtless, by the way, which is also another concerning thing. Like, why is he shirtless running through the trail? But also another thing is it's like if you can catch him running in the trail and somebody's coming after him, then that means you should have also seen in the fit footage the person chasing him. This is the South. You got to be very careful where you go. I'm going to give you a little story really quick. I remember going with some friends uh, to go canoeing, right? Never been in a canoe before in my life, right? I do not go, I do not swim in natural waters, typically. I swim in pools. I swim in chlorinated water. I'm a city boy, right? That's who I am. That's, yeah. And so I wanted to go. You know, it would be a nice experience. So we went in Lake County to this canoeing. Uh, and this is back in the day when we had flip phones. That tells you how long ago it was. And of course, I don't have that much experience in the canoe. So, of course, the canoe flipped over and I'm swimming in, you know, river water. And one of the things that we that I experienced was as we were going down this river. I see little white kids swinging on a rope from a tree and then diving into the water. I don't like kids. Okay. As we come closer, I see this big house that's right on the bank of the river. Oh, I guess they live in that house right on the bank of the river. And then I see something else. You know what I see? I see a big, gigantic Confederate flag flapping in the wind. I am one of the only black people in that. I think I was one of two black people in a group of 10. Do you know how fast I started rowing past that house? 
because I knew if I knew what was good for me, I better get my black ass out of that area. There are still sundown towns in this country. So do I think that this is foul play? Hell yeah. No doubt about it. So when people talk about, oh, well, there's no foul play. Stop, stop, stop. Just stop. And I know she ain't buying it either. Well, now the sheriff there, uh, Joel Houston is saying, well, okay, well, now we're going to really investigate because, you know, murder could be a thing. We're not going to rule it out now. But my thing is, why did you rule it out then? Why were you so quick to say there was no foul play involved unless you knew what really happened to him and you were covering up? Now, I would say allegedly, but I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to connect the dots and saying that the police there in Mississippi is, been compl is complicit because they always have been, right? We know that white supremacists, KKK, and the police officers, they're all the same people. In fact, their uniforms are interchangeable or they change out of them when they change into another one, right? So the police officers, they're working throughout the day and they want to go cause some trouble at night, they put on a roll. So to me, in my opinion, that's why they just, you know, brushed it under the rug. Oh, there's nothing to see here. Keep it moving. But now that it's got national attention, now they want to act like they got some sense. Mm. But you know what? The truth is going to come out. Mm. And I hope every last person from the police officers all the way down to the person who stole this credit card is held accountable because I'm with Benjamin Crump on that. Yeah, that sounds like a modern day lynching to me. Y'all tell me. Mm hmm. Absolutely. And so, look, the problem is, is that a lot of times people will automatically think, well, the police have to protect you because that's what their job is to serve and protect. Per the United States Supreme Court, the police do not have a constitutional obligation to protect you. Google it. Go ahead. Get on the Google machine and Google it. The police do not have a obligation to protect you at all. Not by the Constitution. Do you really think they're going to protect your black ass? Why do you think we say organize to create dual power so that we can change the system? Because we need real public safety, not this thing that they call public safety. It's not safety. So with that being said, check on your black friends. Check on all your friends. Because many of us do not feel safe and if you see a black person, especially to stop by police, at least let your presence be there so that the police think twice about what they do next. Because community still needs to come together in order to protect each other. Thank you so very much for watching my channel. And I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.